Good morning, everyone. I have my cup of coffee here joining you. Maybe you have a glass of wine, yeah, maybe you have a beer, maybe you are eating lunch. And really, there's way, no way of knowing. Uh, everyone tuning in from around the world, which is great. It's always fun to see people saying hello in the chat. Um, um, yeah, thank you for joining me today. I think it's gonna be a fun session. I think it's a session uh, where it's possible that you may come across some concepts that really expand your musical world. Um, I know that, because I've been recently getting into this myself and I just, I love uh, looking into it. So I'm gonna keep a little bit of a secret as we move forward. Um, we are gonna be joined uh, for a short while this morning by Nicoletta Todesco to talk about Getoberfest, which is coming up, good grief, in a week. Uh, it's coming up soon. So uh, talking about what that's gonna be like and uh, the guests that we're having. Uh, Getoberfest is a, a, a live event that we have online uh, for the Academy members at the CGC Academy. And um, it's a whole weekend action packed with playing and learning and uh, performing and guest teaching, lectures, masterclasses, all that good stuff. So it's gonna be really fun. So I'm gonna get on the Skype and call Nikki in a little bit. Um, but I'd like to start by just perhaps piquing your interest uh, to start off with. Um, so how should we start? Tell me how you would describe this sound world. comments in uh, Hans is saying sort of dark and uh, John good day John uh, is saying mellow and haunting Ed is saying it's open <laughs> pensive Matt says Matt, Matthew says pensive Andrew says lush all right how about this sound. write in hashtag two, like number two, to make sure it's clear that we're talking about the second one. Susan says deeper, reflecting. Interesting that you say deeper. beautiful harmonics of the instrument. Okay. Uh, what about now just as... What about this?
this is number three. What is this? What, what words come to mind here? Or any any musical concepts? John is saying definitely brighter than the last two. That's interesting. Some interesting descriptions coming in, um, and this is all going into uh, the world of modes. And uh, if you've ever come across that term, I think it can be a really confusing concept. I'm going to try in this session introduce you to the concept, give you a tool to play around with the sound world. Um, yeah, Kerry, Kerry uh, knocked on the head there. Different modes or something. Um, so. There are some descriptive words here that are, are like paths and meditative and, and feelings, uh, perhaps ev ev evocative feelings. Uh, but they do have distinct sound worlds, I think you would agree. You've got this the one I did it just at the end. It's probably the most familiar of the three. That's the C major scale there. Also known as the uh, Ionian mode. The first one I did was... Dorian, and then we went to uh, uh, Ionian, major, the major scale. And the beautiful thing about learning modes is that it really does expand your musical world. We're so uh, focused in the classical music world on major and minor harmonies. We often, you know, in the early stages of learning, we can often attribute, you know, happy and sad to major and minor. But with modes, we really start expanding out to different nuances, like shades of color. And we see the same notes in different contexts with different centers of gravity, and it creates a new sound world. So I'm, I'm excited to um, open this world of modes up to you. And like I said, the, the goal is really to pique your interest. To give you, I'm going to give you a couple of playing improvisation tools that are quite easy um, to play around with that and explore that world. So hopefully by the end of the video, you might be able to, uh, right now you'd be able to define between a major scale, minor scale and by the end maybe we can talk about um, Lydian, Phrygian and Dorian as well and maybe you might be able to identify those in a similar kind of way. But as I mentioned before we get into that which I'm excited to talk to you about I want to invite uh, Nikki onto the stream to talk about Guitoberfest. <clears throat> so let me cross let's all cross our fingers our technology fingers uh, and I'm gonna try and call Nikki. <laughs> All right, here we go. Hello. Hey, Nikki. Hey, technology success. Yay! I, I was on the phone on the other on the chat. Oh right. Okay. Oh, I see. Screen, of course. Right. Yeah. And now I'm with you. <laughs> so it's, it's really funny. I was like fingers crossed. Yes. Everything yeah, worked. No, it's always a bit of a fingers crossed moment. But thank you. Thanks for joining us. Um, yeah, thank you. And uh, yeah, so why don't you just... I have a question for you oh, before we get into yeah, serious stuff. Sure. <laughs> What's the next to your blend? Because I see something else next to the blend. All oh, right, thank you. Yeah, I forgot I, forgot I did that. Uh, yes, so I think they're still on the screen. There, that little... I, last week, so the very first CGC show, I, I had Matt said, you really need a plant in the background. And so the second week I added the, that plant in the middle, which is a plastic pot plant, but... Nonetheless, it brings a bit of life. And then next to it now is um, an actual live little cactus thing that has spiders and little mini cacti things in there. So, so I'm just, I'm adding. It's, it's going to be nice. a, sh a shrubbery. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love yeah. it. I love it. Now, now you have to add something new every week. Yeah. You know, that now you have this pressure on yeah. you. <laughs> so anyway. um, why don't you give us a little bit of a... a um, introduction and also uh, to Gotoberfest and also uh, tell us what's going to happen this year. Yes, absolutely. I'm super happy uh, to talk about it now also because people that are live with us might discover something they don't know. <laughs> For example, here. So I'm pretty excited about that. 
Um, so, well, Gitoberfest will run next week, uh, actually one week from now, exactly, uh, Next uh, from Friday, 4 p.m. New York City time, and we'll run it every afternoon until Sunday night, and we'll, we'll close the event. And Gitoberfest is... Uh, this um, great festival, uh, guitar, classical guitar festival that we run for the Classical Guitar Corner Academy members. And uh, what will happen is that we will have a lot of activities, all classical guitar related, from uh, lectures, master classes, workshops, open mics, concerts, like anything that has to do with enjoying, learning, and um diving into topics that uh, will help us keep up the enthusiasm for classical guitar. So that's exciting. Nikki, we, 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 the technology gods have deigned that there will be an issue this morning, and that is of echo. So I'm just, I'm going to have to do a bit of switching on. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. Don't have to do anything. I have to switch on and off between some settings. Um, so I can't, I can't have a back and forth, but I will. Uh, let you continue. Would you want to talk about who will be joining us uh, in Gitoberfest? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm more than excited about that because uh, our members yet. <laughs> so um, I'm really happy uh, to announce them live and today. So, well, we will have the faculty members of, of the CGC Academy. So um, Dave, Simon, I, and uh, Sania and James. Um, will be with us for sure, and uh, uh, I'm I'm really happy the whole family, CGC family, is there, and we will be joined by Richard Savino and Connie Shu. So both like we have both a West Coast uh, artist this year, and they will join us for lectures, master classes, and workshop, and um, it's going to be excited because I I know some of the topics. <laughs> I'm not going to reveal them yet, but we will um, dive um, uh, into some um, early music topics as well. So I'm really excited about that to, to have more insights about early music with uh, Richard Savino, which is a um, um, really great artist that knows and worked a lot with uh, early music and Baroque music. And Connie Shu is one of our favorite collaborators at CGC, and uh, she's she's a fantastic artist and teacher as well, and uh, she will join us on Saturday uh, afternoon. So I hope you're excited. I, I hope you're getting crazy in the chat now that you know these secrets. <laughs> I don't know what the uh, the appropriate emoji is for, but we need some sort of like excited round of applause kind of emoji. But you can put some kind of thing. But it's it's just really nice. I think uh, last year this was a really um, it brought people together. It made it enhanced the sense of community. Uh, it was just a really nice injection of inspiration and motivation for a lot of people. So I think it's going to be that again. And um, uh, and thank you for thank you for organizing all of this, Nikki. Oh, that, that's one of my favorite things. Yeah. Well, I also get stressed out maybe, but I forget about it because it's it's such such a fulfilling um, event that uh, it takes off all the all the stress because it's it's just it's just great. <laughs> so um, let's now move on. I wanted to ask you a little bit to lead us into the topic of modes. Uh, what yeah i know you know uh, some some background of the modes can you can you tell us about the origin of modes in our in our music yes well i can try to talk about the origin of modes because as far as we know <laughs> because because there are things that we don't know if we go too far away in time uh, we don't have enough sources and resources that can help us track how how far back uh, modes uh, arrive but um, uh, for the modes that we use also in, in modern music, uh, those have origin in Greek music. So um, if, we, if we go through music history, that's where we get <laughs> the first knowledge of what modes are and the names of the modes that we use, uh, that we use today. Uh, there are these 
types of scales, type of um, organization of the, of the notes in uh, in different descending tetrachords. That was it. And so and and um, they had different type of modes with different names. But if we, if you look at the names of the modes, like Lydian, Mixolydian, Dorian, and Phrygian, and etc., they all take names from geographical areas. So um, the mass, this is interesting because it might say that it might have existed before. They are take, like we. Why are they called that way? Are because in uh, they come from different places, or they are a way to describe music that was happening in different places. We don't, we don't really know. What we know is uh, from treaties from musicians. Well, actually not just musicians because they were also scientists and mathematicians <laughs> and and uh, the um, the great uh, philosophers of that time explain it uh, verbally written because we only have some excerpts of Greek music. And so what we know is that they originated or they were explained in Greek music um, first in history and then they were used after as well. And, and this is only concerned about, like, this is about uh, the music, uh, like the notes modes, so the scales. But there were also rhythmic modes at the same time. So it was not just about um, scales, it was also rhythmic modes that they were um, taken from the declamatory arts of poetry. So how you, how you, um, read poetry. So they had the specific rhythms and those little rhythms were patterns that were used in music, it, same as the the notes modes. So there was a combination of both. So um, that's that's how far we can go <laughs> in modes. And for you, if you had a student that came up to you and said, OK, I've uh, I know the major, I know the minor. And I've heard about this thing called modes. What would you say as an initial introduction to that student? I love for, first I, I was I, I'm thinking at first I would say that's a great question and I would take like 30 seconds of like thinking first how can I frame these correctly and nicely and understanding <laughs> because sometimes that certain concepts are clear but then you don't know how to explain them um, but for sure I would go into um, explaining it by this is just a um, an ensemble of rules and structure in which you put a certain in a certain order the musical material let's say notes in this case could be rhythms um, but in a certain order and you have those rules so when you uh, develop your melodies or your pieces you use these ro uh, rules and these um, these order and therefore you create a different type of musical landscape depending on which mode you chose and so which rules and which order um, you chose. And each one has a different type of sound, as you said, different type of soundscape, landscape, how you want to call it, or like in 17th century theory, different moods, like the effects, the, how they, they uh, get into your moods. <laughs> Well, thank you. That's a, a great introduction. It's, I think it's really helpful to hear uh, different ways, especially when, when topics take a while to sink in. It's great to hear different points of view, different explanations and different approaches. Uh, so that's a great segue. So thank you for coming in to um, talk about Gatoberfest and introduce us to modes. And uh, we will see you next week. In the chat. Ne well, next week, in the, yes, in the chat, but um, next week at Gatoberfest. Thank you, Nikki. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. All right, so it's lovely to have Nikki uh, join us. And um, so let's now get into, uh, let's get into having a look at the modes. I would highly suggest you grab your guitar for this. Um, you can obviously just enjoy and hear, hear the concepts and the sound well, but I would, if you have the guitar nearby, it's gonna be a really nice thing to play around with. As I said, what I would like this to be is to pique your interest, to have that this is a starting point if this is never, um, uh, been part of your musical world. Now, actually, I'm, I'm curious to know in the chat, like for you, um, you can just have a yes or a no. Um, 
Or maybe we can have a, I've heard of it, but never done anything with it. You can have one, I've, like modes, this is completely new to me. So you can say new, it's new to me. Or you can say, um, <laughs> you can say old news as in you already know it. Like this is very familiar to you. Or, um, you know, you've heard of modes, but you don't really understand it. So what was this? Like a one, you say yes, uh, no. I, one is no, I've never heard of it and don't know what it is. Two is um, yes, I know all about it. Uh, and then three is, eh, I, I, I've heard the concept, but it's never really clicked. I would say in general for a long time, until I've dug into it recently, I've been a number three. Be interesting to know where people, people are at. Yeah, Matt's saying that he's heard of the concept, but don't really understand. Uh, you and me both, Matt. <laughs> yeah, so Susan hasn't heard of it. JW's yet yeah, heard, heard of it, but don't understand. Yeah, maybe maybe that's going to be the biggest crowd. It's like, we've heard of the idea of modes, but don't understand it. Okay. Right, interesting. Oh yeah, John, John is saying he only came across it in the practice routines. Okay, so I would suggest as, as a general, oh, Carrie's, yeah, Carrie, Carrie's got a, she's a number two, she's heard about it. And, um, so I would say in general, I think it's classical guitarists in particular, as opposed to pop, rock, jazz guitarists, um, we are less familiar with modes. We don't often do as much composition or as creative uh, work. We often are interpreting music. So we may have actually played some modal material but maybe we didn't know we were playing modal material. And we're definitely not sort of in that world playing with it as, as uh, matter, as uh, playing around with it. So let's start with something familiar, right? And this, is, and this is the major scale. So if you've got your guitar, we'll start on the note C here on the first fret of the second string. Now, some of you may have come across this idea of whole step and half step, and that, that is how we can think about our notes as we create the major scale. So what we're going to do, you know, this is, this is the reason this might be strange on the camera. <laughs> That's the, uh, the, the table, you know, the standing table that moves up and down. So I use that to move the camera sometimes. But uh, now you can see up, up the fingerboard. And what we're going to do is we're going to start here. And I'm, I'm having my fingers tucked in so you can see very easily. And if you move up two frets to D, that's a whole step or a whole tone. We're gonna to move up two frets again to E. That's the fifth fret, that's another whole step. Then we'll do a half step to F. Another whole step again, two frets to G. That's the eighth fret, second string. Another whole step to A, and then a whole step B, and then a half step to C. Let's do that one more time. This is the formula for a major scale in terms of interval. So a whole step, starting about C, whole step, two frets, whole step, two frets, half step, one fret, whole step, two frets, whole step, two frets, whole step, two frets, and half step. So it goes whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. That is the formula uh, with whole and half steps for a major scale. And this matter, this sort of atomic matter, if you will, it makes up the sound world of our major key. And it's very familiar sounding to us. I think we've heard it many times and it's constantly used in uh, Western music, especially and, and the, the, word, the music we use, classical uh, Western music, it's very, very familiar. Now, we're treating the C in this process as the root note. If we treat another note in that scale as the root note, that's where we start encountering modes based off of this major scale. So uh, if we start, so in C major, as many of you know, it has all natural notes, no accidentals, no sharps, no flats. So we sort of go up the musical alphabet, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. If we start, however, on a different note, that is how we're gonna get a different mode. So let's go through this. We'll use the same string for now because it's familiar. You play the D on the second string, third fret. Okay, now we're gonna follow the natural notes, right? So we've got D, then E on the fifth fret, F on the 
sixth fret, G on the eighth fret, A on the tenth fret, B, twelfth fret, C, thirteenth fret, and then back up to D. So we follow those same notes as we just did with the C major scale, but we started on D. What we just played was C Dorian. We play the Dorian mode. Now, if you start on different scale degrees, you're going to get these different modes. We start on the third scale degree, we get Phrygian. We start on the fourth scale degree, we get Lydian. The fifth scale degree, we get Mixolydian. The sixth scale degree, it's hard to say, sixth scale degree, we get Aeolian. And the seventh scale degree, we get Locrian. Now, here is where I think the big question comes up. I know in my mind, anyway, this is where the question comes up of, okay, it's all just the C major scale and you're just starting on different notes. What is that? Like, how is that any different? We're still playing C major. And this is where I came up with a dodgy analogy that may help to conceptualize this. What we're doing with modes is we're shifting the center of gravity. So, uh, you know, in C major, we have the root as C. And that feels very like we land or we come home when we get back to C. And when we have one of these modes, yes, we might be using the same notes in these particular examples. So uh, D, Dorian. Same natural notes that we just had in the C major scale, but we use D as that center of gravity. And this really does change the sound world as long as that shifts as your home point. And the, the dodgy analogy I wanted to use uh, is, as in, you may have seen the TV show The Office, right? It, it doesn't really matter if you haven't. Uh, there's a character in The Office called Ryan. And Ryan starts out in the show as being a temp. So he's sort of uh, at one of the lower rungs in the hierarchy, right? So, but he's the same person. He's a young guy, he comes in just doing odd jobs, doing a temp. And then at a certain point in the show, he becomes... Uh, you know, a high, high up executive. And the analogy here is it's the same person, the same material. So the equivalent for us is the same notes. But his position in that whole uh, social group has changed. His role has changed. And therefore, uh, you know, people treat him differently. He, he, everything's different about him. So that's my dodgy analogy is that, we, yes, we're using the same notes, but we're using them in a different context. And it's got a different grounding, a different root note. So it sounds different. And uh, the, the example, the way I thought was a really nice way to play around with this is one technique that you can use to uh, ground yourself, to recenter that center of gravity is to use a pedal tone. Now a pedal tone is just simply a, a note that's repeated. We come across this a lot. Um, what's a good example? Uh, Cello Suite number one by Johann Sebastian Bach. And listen to this the bass A. Through, and that allows all of this chromatic goodness to, to happen and yet it doesn't go into strange harmonic places really we're just doing a big 5-1 right at the end and so it's a it's a really good example of a pedal tone so we can use this so what I would suggest is take your guitar and tune, tune it down to drop D so that's the sixth string down to D you can use my guitar as a reference if that helps and that is going to be our root note, so D. We're going to play D Dorian. And by simply using uh, the natural notes, so you know, even if you're a beginner player and you're only operating in the first position, fine. Just use any natural notes. 
uh, that you're familiar with. So no sharps, no flats. That's going to include all of the open strings. And if you want, you can also go up the fingerboard. Uh, but for instance, and just constantly play that thumb on the sixth string there for drop D. And if you have your guitar, that's you know, you'll, you'll find, okay, great. So it's really an easy way to play around with this uh, because you, you're, all of those natural notes will guarantee that you're playing in D Dorian. And this pedal tone of D will help you stay centered around that bass note. And uh, that, that keeps you in that Dorian world. Now, the interesting thing here is, I think, also to, you know, switch back and forth between the familiar uh, minor scale or major scale and the, and the uh, mode to... to feel the difference. So if we're playing D minor, have a think, I wonder when you can take a second and have a think, what are the notes in D minor? What's the key signature for D minor? What are the notes in D minor? Well, what we have in D minor is D, E, F, G, A, B flat, C, and D. That's the D natural minor. And the B flat is what the key is here. So in, if I were to play that same improvisation I was just doing and using the B flat, that puts us much more, more squarely into B, uh, D minor. Right? Now, if I start using that B natural, that's where we get into that uh, uh, Dorian world. And let's, you can hear the tangible difference. A difference and if I, we can use those words the pensive the pathfinding the meditative they, they mean something to us I and mean, it's our own experience and but there is a tangible difference going from minor and D Dorian it's a different sound world and what's so wonderful about this is it frees us all of a sudden, or it gives us all these other variations and opportunities to play with these new sound worlds. Uh, it, it moves away from major and minor. You also start getting uh, an insight into a lot of pop music. Um, so I didn't know this until I was researching, but one of my favorite things uh, is this progression that goes, um, you know, let's say... sound I mean you'll find that in I think the earth song by Michael Jackson uh, is one that I think of because very prominent um, a mad world is another example There's a lot of pop songs many many to have this Dorian sound uh, and the reason you have that sound is because you start harmonizing the scale so good D minor and then normally if we go to the four chord in D minor we get a minor four G minor that's our minor sound but if we have that Dorian sound, which is a raised sixth note, then we get this. That's where that comes from. And so if you've ever heard that sound in a piece of music on, on the radio, that's that world. And, and this is where we start getting into this. And I invite you after this, you know, to, if this is interesting to you, so it goes, wow, I didn't know. I've always wondered, like, is that, what chord can they be, they be using there in a major setting? It's, it's modal. Now, uh, I do want to switch now to another mode. This is my personal favorite mode. Uh, so we've tuned down, if you've got your guitar, we've tuned down to D. Now I invite you, and this will not break your guitar, uh, to tune your sixth string up to F. So you can use the third fret uh, on the fourth string as your reference pitch. do is it will if we're using again just the natural notes that means we're going to be playing F Lydian. Now F Lydian is like you take the major scale and you raise the fourth degree. So major would be and if we raise the fourth degree one two three instead of F natural in C major we play F sharp. 
beautiful ethereal but light and bright sound. So if you raise it up to F, there's your reference pitch. And again, you can just play any open string, uh, or any natural notes. Some of you at the academy already some already picked this up and I was playing around with this in the beginning. There's a really beautiful piece in the classical guitar repertoire called Kinkachu I Love You, and for that matter, God of the Northern Forest, which is it pairs up with, which stays in this Lydian mode the entire time. in there is what makes it that Lydian sound. We've taken the F major scale, which has a B flat in it, and we've made that a B natural. Now, if I were to play that same passage and instead of B naturals play B flats, it sounds like this. different. They're very powerful, colorful notes, the, the raised fourth. So if with your string tuned to F, you can play around with that Lydian world. And, and I think the good thing about playing with these pedal tones uh, is that, that it really mm, uh, just centers you in, in that musical world, uh, that sound world. And so you really get a feel for it. And the goal, I think, would be to identify, oh, that's a Lydian sound, or that's a Dorian sound, or that's a Phrygian sound. We'll get to Phrygian next. so beautiful and incidentally these these modes are often used for different things so Lydian is often used in film scores very evocative you can you can understand why I love it it's, it's a great thing to noodle around and improvise with now the third one I want to introduce you take your E string tune it back down to E That's uh, obviously where it is in standard tuning. And with that bass E, we can use that pedal tone, and now we can play around with Phrygian. Same idea, we can use um, the low E string as our pedal tone and play all natural notes. Now, if you want to really enhance the flavor of this, um, I want you to play a lot of Fs, F naturals to E, that, that half step. The jaws, the minor second. And uh, let's see, I mean, in the comments, can you tell me what kind, this, this is a more familiar one in our classical guitar world. What, what sound world does this remind you of? said flamenco, Juan said Spanish, exactly. And if I, you know, you can obviously, you can alter all sorts of scales. We're taking modes at this here, but if we raise one of the notes, we get an even more familiar sound, which is this. So what, is that, that's what I'm doing there is a, uh, I'm raising another note to make it even more flavored in that sort of Andalusian, Moorish, Arabic, flamenco, Spanish sound. Uh, but isn't it interesting? We can suddenly go, the Phrygian one's quite recognizable, I think, to our classical guitar ears. But Dorian and Lydian, maybe a little less so. 
but hopefully if you start playing around with this, you'll, you'll tap into these sound worlds. And, and when you do hear them in, in uh, film music or in pop music, you go, oh, Lydian, oh, there's a, or Mixolydian is really popular in rock. We won't do that today, but, um, but Phrygian, I think is quite one that sort of, we can pick quite quickly. And, uh, you know, we get this kind of sound. I'm playing an E minor chord, but I'm moving the E here up to an F. Yeah. <laughs> so I think this is just a really intriguing, interesting world. Uh, and if you're into composition or if you're into understanding music around us in our world, this just opens up a whole horizon of material. I don't know, I'm mixing my analogies there. But... Um, and, and each, each one, we talked about the whole step and half step, and each one is made up of different arrangements of those whole and half steps. And they, they bring with it um, more melodic sounds and worlds, but also in music, you can harmonize those scales differently. And if you really want to get in the deep end, um, you can start getting modes out of other scales as well. So we have uh, melodic minor, harmonic minor, um, we've got those scales that you can also get modes out of. And so you can start to see that uh, kind of like mixing paint colors, we get all of these varieties and shades of color. And if you want to get away, sometimes I have to admit, you know, playing through Giuliani and Carcassi and all these, like, you get a little bit tired sometimes of that major minor world uh, that we're so in that it's beautiful. Obviously it's got so many amazing things that can be done with it, but Moe's just it suddenly release you into a whole other world and soundscape, which I'm, I think is a lovely gift to our ears and also it gives some insight into pop music. So that was the goal of this session. I wanted to introduce you to that world. I gave you a couple of ways there to play around with uh, getting that sound world quite easily, just to tap into what, what it really is to be playing in a particular mode. So I'd like to invite any questions at the moment. Uh, I'd be interested to know what um, what questions you might have about that process or if you have any any requests I can do some more noodling in different modes if you like have a little sip of coffee I wonder if you've been playing along with me as well playing around with these uh, tunings <laughs> um, yeah, Matt was saying, can I keep, can I keep uh, noodling around? I can noodle around while, while some questions come in. I'll do uh, my favorite, Lydian. So we can play any natural notes and you'll be playing along with me in Lydian. flamenco the most popular mode so flamenco is a style of music that comes from Andalusia in the south of Spain and is heavily influenced by the, the Moorish uh, people that came from North Africa and so there's an Arabic influence a cultural influence there so it's not that they what was the question again it's it's not it flamenco itself is not a mode but they use the Phrygian mode or that Phrygian sound a lot in their music so it becomes very identifiable just like uh, you might find that the major Ionian mode is used very much in classical Western music. You know, you hear this. Uh, it's very familiar to our classical guitar ears. So th that's very common. So it's a sound world. Dorian and Lydian, this jazz guitarists, we've been dealing with these modes all the time. If you listen to Kind of Blue, um, by Miles Davis. That's a very modal album. And so it's not so much that flamenco is a mode in itself, it's that it uses a particular mode very often, so it gets affiliated with that modal world. Um, Andrew, thank you for the nice words. Uh, would, I, would I be right in thinking you build triads on each step of the mode 
like with tonal scales? Yes. Uh, and a question that does come up with that is, do I alter them? Because you'll find that certain triads that come up in those will, you know, not lend themselves very easily to harmonization. They get you have to sort of deal, deal with them differently. We have rules in classical music about voice leading and and functionality of certain chords, five one for example. But like the most extreme example is Locrian, which starts on the seventh degree. So we'd be starting on B. And that actually has a flat five in that process. So you'd never actually be able to do a 5-1 that sounds like a 5-1. Same with Lydian. Lydian's very hard to keep in Lydian because it always wants to pull back to Ionian. Uh, so we, we kept it there with the pedal tone. But once you start getting to the harmonization world, if I were to play in Lydian, which is, I'm gonna play in C Lydian. start moving that bass around so it's not as centered. It kind of wants it once you get back to G major it's like oh now we're home. So it's, it's each mode brings with it its own characteristics, its own challenges with harmonization. Um, but I think if you dig into pop music, that's where you're going to find, oh, wow, I didn't know that's that mode. Like Mixolydians and a lot of rock songs. So that would be... It's like... Uh, it's not bad for my singing. I, I'll give that an A plus for, for assignment level singing. But that's a... Mixolydian has a flat seven, right? So you go to B flat instead of a B diminished. C flat seven, B flat, four, one. So, so each mode has its own gifts musically, um, and, and you'll find a lot of pop songs use them differently. But yes, you harmonize them with triads. Um, and George is saying that harmonic Phrygian is quite common in Greek music. Yeah, you'll find a lot of, I think I would say a lot of, um, folk music or music uh, native to a particular place or region, you'll find a lot of modal music there as well. Dave Reynolds sort of asked a similar question to Andrew saying, how do you approach chord progressions in different modes? So uh, the same way, like, like kind of what I just said, but you can approach it the same way, but the, everything's going to change a little bit. They're going to have different functionalities. And I was talking to Nikki a bit earlier about this, and she made the point that, you know, the... the the scales we use, major and usually harmonic or melodic minor, they have a lot of tension in them because they have this seventh degree that wants to return to the root note or in the minor scale. Yeah, it wants to go back to one. So they built in, in these scales have a lot of tension and directionality. We can use that, or it is used in classical music to have a sense of direction, like a tension and resolution. Uh, whereas modes don't necessarily have that as much. You, you'll find a lot of, uh, you know, that the semitone relationship is moved around in these different modes. So, you know, Lydian. It's gone between the fourth and the fifth. Uh, and the, my brain. My brain broke, but anyway, <laughs> the, the tritone and the, and the semitones are moved around, so the functionality of the chord starts getting a little different, um, if that makes sense. So the approach is going to be different as well. Um, John said, can you discuss adding the leading note to the mode to resolve the scale? So <laughs> that's kind of what I was just saying, is the leading note is like, it's not as, it doesn't function as the leading note. The leading note is a function. Um, and it's, it needs that half step, that semitone, to have that lead. That the whole idea of a leading note is it wants to go somewhere. It's leading somewhere. It's not the final destination. And so you lose that. And, and you don't uh, rectify that either in, in your harmonization. Otherwise, you're getting out of the mode. The whole, the whole identity of the mode comes from these changes. And if you suddenly change things back and you say, oh, I don't have the leading note, then you go back to Ionian or major or minor. And you can do that. You can. You don't have to stay in a mode the whole time as well. Um, so you can use it as a flavor for a while. Uh, and you'll find plenty of examples of that in like John Williams' music for the you know, uh, the movies. 
as I, um, I thought this lesson was incomprehensible during the first few minutes, but you explained it so well, it makes sense now. Oh, good. You know, I found this personally a tricky world to grapple. Um, and music theory is interesting like that. It sort of takes, pennies drop at different times given your experience and other things you've learned. And sometimes it takes someone else describing it in a different way or reiterating the same thing. So I'm glad that the penny dropped now. <laughs> so that's great. Uh, James is asking, can you modulate between modes in a composition? Yeah, absolutely. And in, in fact, I think thinking of modes as a key center, as a world. Uh, so I, I, this would be... I mean, really, you just have to change that center of gravity again. So let's go between C Ionian, which is a C major, and C Lydian, right? So I'll try and make some kind of melody. put a bit more thought into it because you start going between G major and C major or but yes you can absolutely just adding in some of these notes yes you start getting into that Lydian or dark, dark, a modal world and then you can use it to color it so it's maybe not a full modulation you're just adding in a splash of this um, mode or you can completely go from one mode for instance in a pop song it might be um, the verse is in one mode and then the, the uh, chorus is in another it happens quite a bit Oh, yeah. Judy's saying, uh, thanks for playing my songs. <laughs> You're very welcome. Um, yeah, John sort of reiterating my question was about adding an accidental to create a leading note to the modal tonic. Uh, yes, so you can do that, but it starts taking you out of that mode. The mode itself is created by those arrangement of notes. And as soon as you sh start altering some of those, it creates either a different mode or or you're going back to another. So you can do it, absolutely. But, um, you know, these modes are often created by altering one single note, flattening one note. Like the Dorian is like a minor scale with a flattened second. Lydian is like a major scale with a raised fourth. And so if you start saying, I'll play in a mode, but I'm going to raise the seventh degree, that then creates something else again. So you, you can do it, but you'll be going into another musical world. Um, yeah, Matt, Matt saying that he loves the way that Phrygian never seems to resolve. Agreed. You know, some of these, like I said, Lydian's hard to stay in because it always wants, it pull, it's always pulling somewhere else. And so they have sometimes these unresolved uh, sounds. But that's, that's this beautiful world. Like we're so used to hearing that resolution so firm and so um, definite in the major and minor world. So it's nice to have this kind of ethereal, like slightly unresolved world. Adolfo is saying, asking, if I play a C scale in eighth position, what do I get if I play the same pattern starting on the ninth fret? That's a great question. So you're there talking about um, uh, movable shapes. And what happens with movable shapes is that, uh, so you're, you're a C scale in eighth position. So that would be a C scale starting in eighth position. Now, if you move that whole pattern up one fret, none of the notes have changed, but the relationship between the notes is identical. That whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half still part of that same scale we're just shifting it so there you're not changing modes really you've just gone from c major to c sharp major with squeaks um so that's what that's a really great question because you're just moving shapes there but the relationship changes what we're talking about is changing the relationship so I love Lydian. Well, we're at the end of the hour. Thank you for joining me. I hope you, uh, this has been interesting. I've enjoyed researching this um, a lot. Thank you to Nikki for coming in to saying hi. Thank you to Dave for being in the chat. Thank you for all of you for asking great questions, really wonderful questions. Uh, it's always super helpful. Um, so, I'm curious, has this been 
an ear opening experience, you know, uh, and uh, I invite you to go and um, explore this further and, and noodle around with those tunings, you know, uh, drop D tuning for Dorian. Um, oh, I should give you just, if, and you'll probably, this kind of stuff is all over the internet, but I should give you, Dave, could you write this in the chat? Um, Ionian, Dorian, uh, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, Locrian. And that is the order of the modes. So if you were starting on the note C in the C major scale, you get Ionian. Uh, if you're starting on um, the, no the next note, D, in that scale, you'd get Dorian. Now, I, <laughs> I, have, I was taught many, many years ago <laughs> by a teacher a way of memorizing uh, this order, but it's a little bit naughty. It's, a little, it's, not, it's not safe for broadcast. So um, I have to come up with something else. I, I should have prepared something else. It's a little bit, yes, as I said, uh, uh, what is it? Okay, this is the, this is the mnemonic, uh, the sanitized version. Uh, I don't particularly like modes a lot. I don't particularly like modes a lot. Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, Locrian. I don't particularly like modes a lot. Uh, you know, and maybe you could change that to be a bit more positive. I do particularly like modes a lot. Maybe that'd be nicer. But that's the sanitized version. <laughs> you can come out, maybe you can decipher uh, what the, uh, the naughty version was. Um, great. Thank you everyone for the kind comments. Thank you, Dave, for putting that in, uh, in the chat. Great. All right, everyone. Well, it's right on the hour. How about that for timing? Um, I will see ne next week we have Gitoberfest. So we're going to, I think on this live channel, for it's, Gitoberfest is free for all of the Academy members. So if you've ever been thinking about joining the Academy, now is a really good time because that weekend's coming up. But we will try and broadcast next week during this time, or maybe also, it's going to be a two-hour broadcast if we can figure out how to do it technically. We're going to try and broadcast the first two hours where we have I have my presentation and Nick and Dave are doing a presentation as well. So uh, that will be live on the channel as well for the CGC show. Um, and for all the members, we'll, we'll see you in Gotoberfest. It's very exciting. All right. Thank you, everyone. I will see you very soon. <laughs> Bye.